Hello everyone, today we're going to learn how to play the bow against Rune Nagigenda. I'm going to cover everything from his attack to his mechanics. We're going to cover general information, basic attacks, flying charges, and the dive bombs. First, his hit zone values. The Hunter's Note says that Narigente is weak to Thunder and Dragon, but in reality, he takes very little elemental damage. The best way to deal damage to Narigente is to focus on raw damage, yes, even for bow. I'm not going to show builds here, but for PC, I recommend the Rajang bow, and on console, or in a month when Safi comes on PC, I recommend the Safi Blast bow. One thing you have to know about Rinder Narigente is that the fight has two phases. The first phase is going to do a lot of dive bombs and its metal spikes are going to grow. At 40% health, you enter the second phase. During the second phase, some of his moves are replaced by stronger variations and he gets new moves too. Similarly to normal Nagigante, when you break a part that has white spikes, it's going to trip. So be aware of this. Let's take a look at all of his basic attacks. The first attack is a poke. It will poke once or twice with his hands. All you have to do is dash in the opposite direction or backwards. If you attack him during a poke attack, he has a chance to do a counter attack. For this, all you have to do is dash or walk in the opposite direction of his counter attack. If you're too far away from Nerigante's head, he can do a reaching claw attack. This attack is very fast and has very little wind up, so the best way to avoid it is to not overcommit and dodge it at the last second. If you see Nerigante charging like that, he's going to do a headbutt. This has very little range and no spike, so don't be afraid to stay in front of him. Look at the spikes on his head during this attack. If he has no spikes, there will be no projectile. If he has white spikes, there will be a short range projectile. If he has metal spikes, there will be a long range projectile. The best way to avoid the spikes is to dodge on the side or try to high frame them. This attack has a long wind up. He's going to charge his right hand and slam it on the ground. And spikes are going to come out of it. What you have to do is go in the opposite direction. Be careful that you're not too close to him though, because if you're under him when he does this, you're going to get pinned. If you're out of position, you can iframe the spikes by rolling into them. During the second phase of the fight, at 40%, the charge slam is going to be replaced by a double charge slam. This attack is incredibly easy to avoid. All you have to do is stand in front of the Nagigente. Again, if you're out of position, you can iframe through the spikes by rolling into them. During this attack, Nerigante will slam his wing on the floor and throw spikes. You have to run in the opposite direction, but if you're out of position, you can iframe through the spikes. If you're on his right side, Nerigante can do an uppercut. It has a very slow wind-up, so you should probably feel bad if you get a hit. Nerigente has a stronger variation of this move that is a lot faster, and instead of doing an uppercut, it will do a post slam with spikes in front of him. These spikes have a very short range, so either roll backward or just iframe them. For the wing pressure move, not much to say except don't stay on his sides. To avoid Nerigente's normal roar, what you have to do is dodge when he's shooting his head forward. Finally, this is not really an attack, but I want to cover this animation, the exhaust animation. When it does this, it's going to be unenraged at the end of the animation. You can either use this animation for damage or to claw preemptively and get a free wall bank. Now let's cover the flying charges. I wanted to separate those attacks because they can be very deadly if you don't know how to avoid them. Ruiner has two different flying charges. The tempered version of Ruiner has an extra variation that is commonly known as the Pepega Slam. However, it's not on PC yet, so I'm not going to be able to cover this. 
there are two main ways to know what variation of the flying charge the ligante is going to do. The first way is to look at his forelegs. If both his legs are on the ground when he's doing it, he's going to do the wing charge. To avoid this, all you have to do is walk backwards. You can roll if you want to, but you don't even need to. If one of his arms is raised during this animation, he's going to do the running charge. To avoid the running charge, just run sideways instead of rolling backwards and dodge at the last second. I said earlier there was another way to know what charge it was going to be. The sound of the roar is going to be different depending on what charge Neigente is going to do. It may sound complicated, but with practice, you don't even have to look at him anymore to know. Finally, the dive bombs. And I have great news for you. They are not random at all. Neigente will always do five dive bombs every fight. He's going to do a dive bomb at 95% health, 80% health, 65% health, 50% health, and 40% health. And yes, that is why sometimes he does multiple dive bombs in a row. If you do enough damage during the dive bomb recovery to reach the next threshold, he's going to just spam the dive bombs. Okay, now that we cover this, Nagigante has two different dive bombs. On the first dive bomb, he will have one of his arms raised. On the second dive bomb, he will have both of his arms raised. If one of his arms is raised, is going to bomb on the floor and throw spikes in the direction of the arm that is raised. All you have to do to avoid this is take a couple steps in the other direction. Yes, it's that easy. For the dive bomb with both his arm raised, is actually going to track you. This is still very easy to avoid. What you have to do is just walk sideways and roll just before it touches the ground. Even if you fail to avoid the roll, you still have time to roll on the side, so it's very easy to avoid. Now a couple of tips for the dive bombs. The dive bomb animation is actually a locked animation. It means that until the animation is over, it cannot be flashed, it cannot be stunned, it cannot be flinched or staggered or anything like that until the animation is over. There are very few locked animation like this in the game. But what it means is that his flinch threshold is locked at 0%. This means that if you do enough damage during this animation to get a flinch, the flinch is actually going to be saved until the animation is over. And then all you have to do is do one damage to cause a flinch or a clagger or anything like that. Finally, to avoid his dive bomb rolls, what you have to do is dodge at the exact same time as he lifts his pose in the air. I hope this helps. There's a couple moves that I did not cover because I didn't think they were dangerous enough that I needed to cover them. I plan on doing a quick update when Tempered Arena comes on PC in a couple of weeks because he has a couple of differences. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section and I will try to answer them.